today, February 6, 2013, uh, William Shatner of Star Trek fame is going to have an interview with the International Space Station. Uh, what are your views on dematerialization? Beam me up, Scotty. Well, well actually, uh, David and I, years ago, we were traveling from L.A. Uh, to Estes Park in Colorado Springs to do a yoga conference and uh, it gave us an opportunity because he, like we were driving together he agreed to come with me so that I wouldn't be driving alone and it gave us an opportunity to just talk about all kinds of stuff and one of the things we talked about was he had this notion years ago that in order for uh, space travel to ever happen because of the huge interplanetary distances, intergalactic differences, uh, distances, it, it would seem to require some kind of what he figured was the acceleration of uh, mass, like, uh, you know, atomic mass, uh, in other words, substance or things, including humans, that you would have to somehow accelerate the frequency of vibration of any mass uh, to quantum light speed. Uh -huh. And if you did this, then you could conceivably project, uh, you know, atomic structure, uh, mass structure, any form of mass structure across uh, galactic distances at quantum light speed, which is basically almost simultaneously, instantaneously non-local. There's a slight, slight delay. But we figured that this must be the only conceivable way that you could create intergalactic travel. In some ways, it's kind of like folding space, but it, it's different in that you're actually accelerating mass uh, to quantum light speed. So in a lot of ways, this would be similar, you know, to the Star Wars uh, phenomena of, of Beam Me Up, Scotty, where you saw like an instant dematerialization and then some kind of projection and reassimilation at the other end. So this is what we also thought of, is that you'd have to have some way of reconstituting, so you'd have to know the, the codes uh, you know, of, of whatever substances, whatever mass you were projecting. You'd have to know the formulation codes, in other words, the codes that make it possible for any given type of mass to manifest. So, if, you know, and presumably these would be translatable in the process of dematerialization, of accelerating mass to quantum light speed. So, insofar as, uh, these codes would be revealed in the process of dematerialization, then it would presumably be just a step to have retained these codes and to make it possible to reassimilate at the other end. And so as we were reflecting on this and enjoying this sort of discussion, one of the phenomenal things that became apparent to us is that if, if you had to accelerate a, a human being to quantum light speed in order to create this kind of uh, projection at galactic distances, then in a sense, whatever you dematerialize would become enlightened. They would, be, they would become quantum awake in the moment of de dematerialization and recomposition. So in other words, when you arrived at the other end, any alien who might arrive at the other end, you know, let's say coming to visit us, they must have experienced uh, enlightenment. They must have experienced the ultimate uh, unified nature or oneness nature of reality. So when we, when we put that understanding together, we sort of roared with laughter because we couldn't believe it. The implication would be, what are we so afraid of any kind of alien visitation for if Basically, in order to get here, they would have, have to have become enlightened 
and would therefore understand, in a sense, the true godness nature of reality, you know, the true ultimate oneness uh, source out of which, which is pure energy out of which all things are made manifest.